Pokemon Go comes out in a few days here, and I got the chance to play it early. So now it's stopped giving constant error messages, here's a video. From what I've seen, it has all the downsides of microtransaction based mobile games, spending most of your time staring at a boring screen waiting for something interesting to happen, and all the downsides of a location based game, being a location based game. So let's suit up, hit the streets, and catch us some Pokemans. So this is the bit I meant about waiting for something to happen. I've been walking for about 10 minutes now, and although there are bits that look like they should do something, nothing happens when you walk in them. About the only thing that's happened so far is I've got a bit wet. Just watching this man walk along. Yep, that's where I'm walking as well. Man's walking where I'm walking. Felt like a bit of a mong just walking along with people looking at me, so I'm in a cricket field. This is where I guess all the cricket type Pokemon hang out. Uh, strong against rounders but weak against basketball. Pokemon Go is telling me that this here is Compostus and Roller Thing, the uh, brand new ninth gen Pokemon. My main problem with this sort of location based game is that their places to go are very obviously computer generated. So while all the promotional pictures look like this, living anywhere other than in the big cities looks like this. There are exactly two places in my fairly large town to go and do things at. And although anyone who lives here could tell you some fairly interesting places to put them, like our famous butt plaque statue, the computer algorithm has decided to send people here to this tiny rundown church. One of the main things to do at these locations is to set off a, uh, set off a lure module, which increases the amount of Pokemon in the area for 30 minutes so you can hang around and catch them. Am I going to lurk around this church for half an hour? No. No, I'm not. <laughs> in about 20 minutes of wandering around here, we've gone down from about 50% to 2% on the battery. And my phone's normally pretty good, so it looks like to have any hope of doing anything in this game, you need to bring an external charger with you wherever you go. I thought I just saw a pigeon. I did it somewhere. Oh, can you see that? It's a pigeon. Pokemon are in the real world, oh man. It's now raining pretty heavily. I'm beginning to think I could have stayed inside and played Pokemon on the DS like a normal person. Be drier. Might have actually found something by now. So, taking it to the woods, hoping the moist conditions will help in my search for a Squirtle. Maybe even a Meowth. I found a Meowth through the trees here. I don't know if you can see it, so I'll lean the camera in close. It seems to be minding its own business. Not yet aware of it. Unfortunately, in this game, there's no way to battle wild Pokemon against uh, against your own Pokemon. But I found a way, I think. I caught this duo de Hopefully, I'll be able to win this battle. Geo do go! I was just heading for what they call a Pokemon gym just over the crest there on the map. And I'm not sure if it's because I'm like 10 foot further away than I was or what, but it seems to have just blinked out of existence and disappeared. So I'm going to call this a loss and go back into the dry where you can also play video games, but without walking around. I later realised that the indicator for Pokemon being near is a small flurry of grass, not the circles that kept appearing when I first went out. I still have no idea what the circles were supposed to indicate, but that's pretty standard when it comes to this game. The in-game instructions are basic at best, and when you're throwing Pokeballs at your defenceless animal of choice, a confusing target appears. Years of video game quicktime events may have led you to believe that the bigger the target is the better, or that when the two targets overlap is when you should throw the ball. Nope. Your chances of the ball going where you want it to are best when the target is at its smallest. Sometimes the game also hard crashes when you successfully catch a Pokemon, although luckily the catch is still safe to the servers so you don't lose your quarry. When you eventually get there though, it is quite satisfying to build up your team, and importantly, you can rename them all to swear words if you want to, but there's not really much you can do with all your collected Pokemon. Battles between friends, and trading in general, are inexplicably absent, and the focus is on collecting loads of the same Pokemon rather than filling a Pokedex, which would be impossible for anyone who doesn't plan on travelling the world staring at their phone. 
These duplicate Pokemon are used for both levelling up and evolving ones you already own, an odd system which uses Stardust, and a candy specific to each Pokemon's evolution line. You get a few of each of these materials by catching the spare Pokemon, but only one candy is guaranteed by trading them on into Professor Willow. Because Pokemon can take 50 plus of these candies to evolve, and the slow rate they appear, it's a lengthy grind before you'll be able to evolve even a single species. Microtransactions will make this easier for you, of course, with the absurd amount of £80 at a time being the most the game suggests you put in. At this point of paying well over a full game's price on a freemium mobile game, it seems insulting to call them microtransactions, so macrotransactions are probably a more apt description. With the currency this gives you, you can buy lures to increase the rate of Pokemon battles, which also helps you level up quicker. Leveling up Pokemon increases HP and CP combat power, which are the only two stats Pokemon have in this game, and as Pokemon aren't used to catch other Mons, they are only relevant to the gym battle system. These gyms, as well as poker spots, are dotted sparsely around the world depending on where you live. Where I live, there's a 30 minute walk in between each one, and there are only two in total, although denser cities probably have a less ridiculous time of things. The game expects you to put the time in and visit these daily, granting you some items such as pokeballs when you get there. For a game that revolves around staring at your screen while you walk places, it certainly doesn't do much to make that entertaining. Compared to the music from the previous handheld games, which was so good it stood on its own to listen to, the background music is noticeably bad, with crunchy synth sounds and not much variation. The character customization, which is thankfully here after skipping the last generation, has been massively downgraded from X and Y so that apart from picking gender and skin colour, your options are basically limited to which subtly different black and yellow textures you want. The main failing of Pokemon Go is that it expects you to go everywhere while not letting your attention slip for a second, lest you miss the telltale flurry of grass that indicates something is going to finally happen. Although people are no strangers to walking around immersed in their phones, it's just not enjoyable. A sensible and battery saving solution would be to allow you to mercifully lock your phone, put it in your pocket and be notified of Pokemon or locations as you walk by. The technology is definitely there, it's used by many other apps that keep background processes running. Pokemon Go just chooses to require your undivided devotion instead of being something that sits in the back of your mind as a fun diversion. Hell, doing that might even delay the inevitable news of someone walking off a pier as they were so immersed in fishing for AR Magikarp. Really, the main thing that justifies this game's existence is the opportunity for the makers to mess with the few people who will dedicate their lives to going everywhere and filling up the game's Pokédex like that. Want that elusive Voltorb? Hope you enjoy going into the middle of an ISIS training camp. Oh, you just need a Magmar to complete your decks. Well, you realise they only live in volcanoes, right? Better put on some sunscreen. You're gonna do okay, kid. Bye bye.